Good afternoon, my friends. This is Paul, and today we're going to be looking at the various franchises in Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, at least the ones tied to characters. And we're going to see once and for all which franchise is actually overrepresented and which ones are the fans just blowing out of proportion. This was inspired by the controversy around Byleth joining Super Smash Bros. Ultimate and the argument that there was too much Fire Emblem representation. To which I say, well yes, there are eight Fire Emblem characters, and all of them wield swords, but Fire Emblem isn't just about characters, it's also about stages, music, classic mode routes, bosses, etc. There's a lot of quantifiable things in the Smash Bros. universe, so that is how we are going to define objectively which franchise is actually the most represented. So let's set a few parameters in place so that we don't get too much into the vague and confusing territory. For starters, what we're going to do is we're going to count quantifiable variables. So for example, characters, stages, songs, spirits, and then we're going to add a number at the end based on how many there are. For characters, we're going to count whichever characters make up a slot as one character. So Pirate and Mithra are going to count as one, Pokemon Trainer is going to count as one, Zelda and Sheik will count as two, because in Ultimate, they are separated. For the spirits, we are going to count spirits and spirit battles separately, because some characters just have spirits that don't have a battle attributed to it, like Birdo, for some odd reason. However, we are not going to count the fighter spirits, unless if it's an alternate, because that would be redundant to have both a fighter and a fighter spirit because it comes with the territory. So for example, male Robin will not be counted as a fighter spirit, but female Robin will, because that is an alternate. We will also have World of Light bosses, me costumes. Me costumes, to keep in mind, is we're going to count sets as one piece, because then that gets into really confusing territory if we don't. So for example, say Undertale were a franchise, which it's not, because there isn't a character associated with it, the Sans costume would be one piece of a me costume, whereas the arcade bunny hat would be another, because that's the whole set. So what constitutes which franchises we're going to look at? We're going to have two rules of thumb to avoid this from being confusing. The first is we're going to see if the character is in the slot. So for example, Rob is a character, and even though he's only been in two games, he will count as a Smash franchise because he's a character. If that's too confusing, then we will use the songs in the soundtrack as our next base. So when we're quantifying Terry, for example, we're going to use the entirety of SNK as his franchise, because even though he's from Fatal Fury, SNK is listed in the soundtrack as where his music is from. So hopefully that makes sense, and hopefully that'll help you guys figure out which franchise you think is actually overrated, or are there franchises that could use more love. So without further ado, let's start ranking. I'm sure this is a surprise to no one, but Rob is number 32 on our list, making him the least represented character in all of Ultimate. He was bundled as a toy with the original NES, but only two games ever supported him, and he's been reduced to cameo roles in various Nintendo titles ever since. So we're counting his franchise as the Stack Up Gyromite franchise to avoid being confusing, because then we could say, well, technically Mario Kart DS is a... no, no, <laughs> let's, let's stick to what's easy. We have one character, one song, two spirits, and one spirit battle for a measly total of five. The Light Gun series is next, which were a handful of NES games, which included Duck Hunt, that used the Zapper in various ways. Since it only was on the NES, you can probably imagine why it's only number 31 on this list. It came with two songs, one character, one stage, two spirits, and two spirit battles for a total of eight. Number 30, we have Ice Climber, which has had a whopping, overwhelming one game since the NES. So therefore, it only has two songs, one character, being both Ice Climbers, one stage, three spirits, and two spirit battles for nine points. 
Number 29 is the Game & Watch series, which had quite a lot of games ever since the 80s, and some of them even predate Mario. And they're actually still making Game & Watch games, although nowadays they're more so of just recreations of old Mario & Zelda games. Game & Watch has two songs, one character, one stage, 13 spirits, and 19 spirit battles for a total of 26. Hey, we're getting in the double digits now. My personal favorite franchise to be represented in Smash is the Banjo-Kazooie series, which is only number 28 on this list. Then again, the stuff it does have is very quality stuff, so I shouldn't be complaining too much in terms of how well the quality was of the very little quantity. Banjo and Kazooie come with 10 songs, one character being Banjo and Kazooie combined, one stage, eight spirits, and seven spirit battles for a total of 27. Tied at number 28 with Banjo Kazooie, we have the Pac Man slash Namco franchise as they're quantified in the soundtrack. Otherwise, this would be much lower if it was only Pac Man. We have 11 songs, one character, one assist trophy, two items, one stage, one me outfit, one World of Light sub area, being the Pac Maze, five spirits, and four spirit battles for a total of 27. Given how long Pac-Man and Namco have been around, I'm honestly surprised this isn't higher, but then again, at least it's better than what Ice Climber has. Number 27 is the Wii Fit series, which has had three games on the Wii and Wii U, and honestly, I'm shocked that this was represented at all. This was probably the most out-of-left-field franchise in all of Smash. With 10 songs, one character, one stage, 10 spirits, and 6 spirit battles, we get a grand total of 28. Number 26 is Minecraft, which a lot of people joked that they would like it in Smash, but I don't think they were actually serious. But hey, the Smash team listened. With the DLC comes 7 songs, 1 character, 1 stage, 3 me outfits, 10 spirits, and 9 spirit battles for a total of 31. 25 is Kingdom Hearts, which is the final franchise to be included in Smash, thanks to Sora being the last DLC character. Sadly though, the team really only focused on like three of the games in the franchise, so that kind of hurt its placement a little bit, especially considering how much Melody of Memory represented the series by itself. The DLC comes with one character, one stage, 12 spirits, 8 spirit battles, and 10 songs. The additional 10th is if you have Melody of Memory save data for a total of 32. Tied at number 25 with Kingdom Hearts is the Punch-Out! franchise, having four games since the arcade days. And I can't believe the most recent one was on the Wii. Like, what's keeping them from making more games? We have only five songs one character, one stage, 13 spirits, and 12 spirit battles for a total of 32. Despite being even more popular than Mario in Japan and causing Japanese people to lose their minds when Hero was revealed for Smash, Dragon Quest is only number 24 on this list. With eight songs, one character, one stage, four me outfits, 13 spirits, and eight spirit battles, we have a grand total of 35. Honestly, I feel kind of bad for the Japanese people because they didn't even get the orchestral arrangements of the songs, and only eight of them at Taboot. At number 23, we have the Persona series, which actually has more games than just Persona 5, although said games are also not on the Switch yet, which is baffling to say the least. You have 11 songs, one character, one stage, four me outfits, 13 spirits, and 12 spirit battles for a total of 42. At number 22, we have Bayonetta, which is another shocker that it's so low on the list, because even though it has two games and they've only been around since the Xbox 360 days, Bayonetta is now owned by Nintendo, so you would think they'd be able to get more music tracks, but Ultimate didn't have any new ones that Smash for 3DS and Wii U didn't already have, so that's kind of bizarre. Nevertheless, what we do have is 11 songs, one character, one stage, one assist trophy, 18 spirits, and 13 spirit battles for a total of 45. Next up is ARMS, which so far only has one game, and it came out in 2018, yet it still managed to creep its way up to number 21. 
We have 18 songs, yes, all from one game. One character, one stage, one assist trophy, three me outfits, 11 spirits, and equally 11 spirit battles for a total of 46. Unfortunately, the number 21 spot is tied with arms with Final Fantasy. The reason why this is kind of abysmal is because Final Fantasy has been around since the NES and has had more games than I know how to count. Yet what did Smash do? They were only able to represent Final Fantasy VII and in the movie Final Fantasy VII Advent Children. So this probably could have been so much higher if they actually took advantage of all of the games in the franchise. We have a measly 11 songs, beats the two the original game had before the Sephiroth DLC, two characters, two stages, four me outfits, 14 spirits, and 13 spirit battles for a measly 46. Starting off the top 20, we have Wario, who used to be only a boss in Super Mario Land 2. Then he, like many other Mario characters, ended up making his own series. Wario has 11 songs, one character, one assist trophy, two stages, two me outfits, which I totally forgot to put in this video, 19 spirits, and 15 spirit battles for a total of 51. Way to go, Wario, for only being originally a Mario spin-off character. It's nice to see that Nintendo and Konami sorted out their differences, because Metal Gear is number 19. We have 11 songs, one character, one stage, one assist trophy, one World of Light sub-area, that being the hidden base where you fight Gallium, 25 spirits, and 20 spirit battles for a total of 60. Tied with Metal Gear at number 19 is F-Zero, which is desperately in need of a reboot. The last game that came out for the series was on the Game Boy Advance, and technology has certainly improved since then, although at the very least, Mario Kart 8 offered some neat F-Zero DLC. We've got 26 songs, most of them from the first game, surprisingly, one character, one assist trophy, three stages, one me outfit, one World of Light sub-area where you get to race in the Falcon Flyer, 14 spirits, and 13 spirit battles for a total of 60. Number 18 is Pikmin, which has had four games, yet Three of the four were ported to different systems. Nintendo must really like to give people multiple options to play their Pikmin games. With 14 songs, one character, one assist trophy, one item, two stages, 23 spirits, and 19 spirit battles, Pikmin garners a score of 61. Yet another Mario character has come along and made his own franchise. So at number 17, we have the Yoshi series. With 14 songs, one character, four stages, one me outfit, 25 spirits, and 20 spirit battles, the Yoshi series earns home a respectable score of 65. You may think that DLC doesn't stand much of a chance on this list because it was added to the base game and they could only do so much with six bucks, but Tekken would prove you wrong as it's tied at number 17 with Yoshi. Tekken has one character, one stage, one me costume, 39 songs, wow, 13 spirits, and 10 spirit battles for a total of 65. Number 16 is taken by Sonic the Hedgehog with 20 songs, one character, two assist trophies, two stages, two me outfits, 22 spirits, and 18 spirit battles. Sonic gets a nice fat score of 67. And unlike some other series, Sonic actually represents almost all of its main games in Smash. Even the notorious Sonic 06 got some references. Number 15 is the Star Fox franchise with 18 songs, three characters, two assist trophies, one item, three stages, one me outfit, one World of Light sub area, meaning the one where you fly the R-Wing around, 22 spirits and 17 spirit battles, Star Fox gets a score of 68. Number 14 is the Kid Icarus series, which only has three games, one of which didn't even release in Japan, so it got no representation whatsoever. Yet, I'm pretty sure the reason it's so high is because Masahiro Sakurai, the director of Smash, also directed Kid Icarus Uprising, so that probably was a huge contributing factor. 
Kid Icarus comes with 13 songs, 3 characters, 8 items, 3 stages, 1 assist trophy, 1 me outfit, 2 world of light areas, 23 spirits, and 17 spirit battles for a total of 71. Yet another franchise with only 3 games, Earthbound gets number 13 with 14 songs, 2 characters, 2 assist trophies, 2 items, 4 stages, 2 me outfits, 26 spirits, and 23 spirit battles. Earthbound gets a score of 75. Number 12 is a franchise that is exclusively DLC and should make every other third party company weep with how cooperative SNK was with Sakurai, as they approved of every single song request that he gave them. With a whopping 50 songs, by far the most a third party studio has offered, one character, one stage, three me outfits, 11 spirits, and 11 spirit battles, SNK gets a whopping score of 77. Tied with SNK at number 12 is Splatoon, which only has two games, yet, again, being a first-party Nintendo franchise, I'm sure they were able to squeeze a lot out of those two games. With 26 songs, one character, one assist trophy, one stage, seven me outfits, one World of Light sub-area, the one with all the zap fish, 24 spirits, and 16 spirit battles, Splatoon gets a score of 77. And just think, that number probably could have been even more if Smash had continued by the time Splatoon 3 had come out. The number 11 spot proudly goes to Xenoblade Chronicles. Boy did it help that Pyra and Mithra entered this series, because man Xenoblade needs more love, as currently it only has three games in it, four if you count Torn of the Golden Country as its own game. It has 27 songs, two characters, Pyra and Mithra counting as one, one assist trophy, two stages, three me outfits, 28 spirits, and 25 spirit battles for a score of 88. Wow. Tied with Xenoblade Chronicles at number 11 is Street Fighter, with 38 songs, two characters, one assist trophy, one stage, one world of light area, 25 spirits, and 20 spirit battles. Street Fighter earns a score of 88. Take a note, guys. Nintendo really loves their Capcom franchises. We're finally in the top 10, and of all the franchises, a Konami one, Castlevania, manages to crack the top 10. Castlevania comes with 34 songs, two characters, one stage, one boss, being Dracula, one assist trophy, one World of Light sub area, which is honestly one of the coolest World of Light areas in the whole game, 27 spirits, and 23 spirit battles for a total of 90, and none of this was DLC, which makes this even more impressive. Starting off the single digits, we have Metroid at number 9, receiving something of a resurgence lately, as Metroid Dread has been doing really well, and Metroid Prime 4 will hopefully release this century. Metroid comes with 25 songs, 2 assist trophies, 4 characters, 4 stages, 1 item, one me outfit, 32 spirits, and 23 spirit battles for a total of 92. And yes, I counted the Metroid Dread spirits. Number 8 is Donkey Kong, which some people have argued is Nintendo's oldest franchise. Technically, it's the Game & Watch series, and if you want to be even more technical, it could be Duck Hunt based on a toy they made in the 70s, but we're not here to debate how old the franchises are. We're here to say how much they're represented. Donkey Kong has 28 songs, 3 characters, 4 stages, 1 assist trophy, 2 me outfits, 1 world of light sub area being a hilarious parody of Donkey Kong Country's map, 35 spirits, and 31 spirit battles, giving it 105, the first 3 digit number. Number 7 is Animal Crossing, which it probably helped this get so high because there were actually Animal Crossing stuff in Super Smash Bros. Brawl before Villager came in as a character. So that probably added a lot of content right there. Animal Crossing has 21 songs, 2 characters, 1 assist trophy, 3 stages, 2 items, 2 me outfits, 1 world of light area, surprisingly. Don't worry, it doesn't affect the rating if I'm wrong. 
41 spirits, and 35 spirit battles for a total of 108. And again, I counted the New Horizons spirits. And the award for the most represented third-party franchise in Smash goes to Mega Man, which is number six. Wow! Again, like I said, Nintendo really loves their Capcom franchises. Mega Man has 31 songs, one character, one stage, two assist trophies, four Mii outfits, one World of Light sub-area. Not really sure why I said that, but again, doesn't affect the score. 56 spirits and 48 spirit battles for a total of 144. And that's a third party, guys. Cracking into the top five, we have the Kirby series, which, honestly, if any of you were surprised, you gotta remind yourself that Masahiro Sakurai created the character of Kirby when he was 19, so maybe there is just a little bit of bias there? Maybe? Kirby has 38 songs, 3 assist trophies, 3 characters, 6 stages, 6 items, marks as a boss in World of Light, 2 World of Light areas? I put that as a question mark, but again, this high in the list, 2 doesn't really affect the score that much. 1 me outfit, 56 spirits, and 40 spirit battles gives Kirby a score of 151. If you want to say I told you so, now might be the time, depending on your perspective, as Fire Emblem is number four on the list. Then again, Fire Emblem also represents almost all of its games in the content, so you gotta give it points for that. For a series that's been around that long, it actually represents itself more than Dragon Quest, which has been around even longer, which is abysmal. Fire Emblem has 52 songs, even more than SNK, Eight characters, three assist trophies, one item, four stages, only two me outfits, 85 spirits, and 67 spirit battles, giving Fire Emblem a very hilarious score of 222. Lots of twos there. Number three is The Legend of Zelda, which has been going strong ever since 1986 in Japan and 1987 here in North America. Zelda has 45 songs, 6 characters, 9 stages, 4 assist trophies, 8 items, 8 me outfits, 1 boss, being Ganon, 2 World of Light sub-areas, 91 spirits, and 75 spirit battles, giving it a whopping 249 points. Unsurprisingly, Pokemon, the number one franchise in all of media, is number two with 33 songs, 8 characters, 2 items, 55 Pokemon, why are there not more assist trophies from one franchise like that, 7 stages, 1 me outfit, 1 world of light sub area, not really sure what I was talking about there, 151 spirits and 135 spirit battles, giving Pokemon 393 points. And the number one spot goes to none other than Mario, Nintendo's mascot character. I mean, are you even surprised? Isn't that what companies normally do? Is they like to represent their mascots? Mario has an overwhelming amount of 116 songs, nine characters, 18 stages, 18 items, four assist trophies, 15 me outfits, one World of Light area, 135 spirits, and 101 spirit battles for a total of 420. So what do you guys think? Do you think my system has helped you realize that Fire Emblem is not the most overrepresented franchise? Do you think that some franchise, franchises really should have deserved more love? Let me know in the comment section what you think and if these results were a surprise to any of you. And until the next time, keep the faith, stay epic, God bless, and I'd love to see if a franchise ever over, ever gets represented more than Mario if there's ever a Smash 6, because that would be insane. Bye!